Um, I am recording and I've just started the recording. And um, this is Ellen Teeter. I think I know most of you. I'm the executive director of FASOMA and I'm very pleased to introduce Alejandro Villasuso. He is going to give us a, a really good overview of what health insurance kind of options are, and then talk about the program we've developed for FASOMA members, uh, which includes both a um, plan for people who are contract employees or have a sole proprietor, or if you uh, need some group health plans and actually have employees. So those are some options available. I'm going to turn this over to Alejandro Villasuso. He's with AVC, AVZ Benefit Solutions. Welcome, Alejandro. Thank you, Ellen. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone here at the presentation at SOMA and for this great opportunity to discuss what the board and our agency were able to put together for SOMA members. Um, before I begin, let me be briefly introduce myself. I am Cuban American, born and raised in Miami, now live in just north of Palm Beach. De decently speak two languages, you know, love fitness, art, dancing, Latin, math. I initially started out as an engineer, as a matter of fact, designing, cost estimating, and project managing homes, buildings, water workflows, and land developments for 10 years. But I wanted to be more personable with my clients by helping them be physically and financially healthy. So I delved into business finance, got my insurance license shortly after, now, over 10 years later, with my own agency, here we are. Um, most small companies and individuals alike struggle to find the right benefit financial balance to retain employees and support their families, respectively. And the current markets don't help. Founded in 2015, AVZ Benefit Solutions has since excelled at being at an independent brokerage, providing our clients an impartial company product comparison. Our agency has over 20 years of training, experience, knowledge, and technology tools to research, leverage, and service client benefit options to accommodate your needs, your budget, your lifestyles, so that these solutions protect their daily living. We have been helping actually acupuncturists actually with just that since 2020 by ensuring diversification, affordability, and reliability. So in tonight's webinar, we'll be discussing the following topics on health insurance. Hopefully um, I don't bore you guys. It's gonna be a lot of information, but it is educational, okay? So obviously leave the questions to the end, which will be helpful. And then of course in the chat room, definitely leave them there and we'll reference them all later. So first one, health insurance types available to all health insurance pathways that you can take, health insurance jargon you should know, health insurance gap fillers, also known as indemnity plans, and decision-making scenarios for individuals, and at the end, group benefits programs and tools for company employees. Now in health insurance types, these first two are very infamous these days. There's the health maintenance organizations, aka HMOs, and the exclusive provider organizations, EPOs. HMOs, they give you local network of participating doctors, hospitals, and other healthcare professionals and facilities that you are required to choose from. HMOs require you to choose an in-network primary care provider also known as PCPs, which essentially coordinates all your care. PCPs must provide you a referral to see in-network specialists, but you should always, always make sure that specialist takes your plan. HMO plan costs like co-pays and co-insurance are typically lower than other types of health plans as long as you stay in network. As you can see the little diagram on the side. EPOs offer you a network of exclusive participating providers to choose from. So they typically don't include out-of-network coverage except for emergencies. 
Most EPOs don't require you to choose a PCP or referral to see in network specialists, but always check again, your member portals provider network. I always emphasize that. EPOs do limit healthcare services to medically necessary items. So staying in network again and getting pre-authorizations when needed will always save you money, time, and frustrations. So as you can see, these two plans, they can range between very cost-effective or expensive. Typically, a lot of people, that happens when they go out of network, okay? The next, the next two types, very most um, famous, POS and PPOs, also known as point of service and preferred provider organizations. Now, POSs, they are a combination of HMO and PPO plans. The provider network are typically smaller than a PPO, but costs for in-network care are typically lower, like an HMO. POS do require you to choose an in-network PCP, and they must provide you referrals to see in-network specialists. But like a PPO, you can also choose a specialist in-network or out-of-network. But when you choose out-of-network, always keep in mind, cost, your cost share is going to be higher, and you will be responsible for filing any claims yourself. PPOs, you know, typically on, you know, in companies, offer you a large network of participating providers to choose from in doctors, hospitals, and facilities. You are not required to choose a PCP, and you can see specialists without a referral. You can see a specialist out of network, but again, cost share is higher. These two tend to be on average in the mid ground. They can fluctuate, but typically commonly I find them to be in the mid ground. Open access plan. I don't know if many people hear about these. These are OAPs. These are also a combination features between HMO and PPO plans. The difference, their network have three tiers of contracted providers from which to choose to obtain services. So you can mix and match provider and tier. In essence, OAPs give you a more freedom to see any provider. OAPs do require you to choose an in-network PCP since some special services and or treatments still need PCP authorization. You can see specials without a referral, but pay a different level of copay or co-insurance depending on the tier. FYI, all PPO plans, group self-funded and low funded plans have OAP networks. HMOs rarely do. That's a typically a cost for these, but when you see this in a group, in a company, they typically pay half. So that's why you're not typically hit with the entire burden. Just FYI. Health insurance pathways. So now we're going to this. And the first one, a lot of people may know about it, the marketplace, marketplace health insurance plans. We're gonna be talking about private short-term medical plans. Also, right after that, group medical plans, which are also known as employee benefits, and what we have for the FSOMA Association Health Plans. All right, marketplace. They're also known as ACA plans or Obamacare. They're available as HMO or EPO plans at different metal levels, metal levels across Florida. All ACA plans cover pre-existing conditions and preventive care services. ACA original monthly premiums, OMP, and medical costs, which I typically call GAPs, and I'll later go into that, are based on age and local demographics. Government subsidies lower these original premiums and medical costs. How do they get them? Well, the subsidy eligibility is based on household income and tax dependent household occupants. And just food for thought, when you typically see at the end of the year, the first annual enrollment period runs from November 1st to December 15th for a January 1st cover start date. But then you also have another chance between December 16th and January 15th for the February 1st cover start date. But then throughout the year, 
special enrollment periods. They run now through there and they all start at the first of the following month, but you must qualify. Here are some marketplace health insurance carriers that AVZ Benefit Solutions represents. And we have many more. Now moving on to short-term medical. Short-term medical plans, SDMs, they typically are available with huge PPO or OAP networks. Coverages can be selected for a month, six months, 12 months, or even up to 36 months. 36 months typically are called tri-term medical, TTMs. With, they have possibilities of fixed premiums, which is very nice. Now, most SDM plans are available to start coverage any day of the year. Few have 20% premium savings with an eligible audit. They offer also free, limited, or no preventive care services. Okay, it depends on the plan you choose. Some do offer limited co-pays or only deductibles with or without max out of pockets which MOPs, that's what it stands for. Again, STMs will require underwriting pre or pre-existing conditions, on pre-existing conditions, apologize. And they do have exclusions and limitations. STMs do not use income to determine premium. So STMs can be more affordable than ACA plans if you are ineligible for an ACA subsidy. Here are some private health insurance carriers that AVZ Benefit Solutions, again, represents. Next, group medical plans, GMPs. Basically, it equals a company of three or more employees that can attempt to ob obtain this. Typically, employee census is always required to obtain a collection on GMP quotes from different insurance companies to estimate healthcare costs, okay? Initial quoting commonly only needs a condensed employee census. However, contracts or complications when we're finally at the, you know, the finish line require a more detailed employee census. All health insurance types are available for quoting with GMPs. Employers are required to contribute at least 50% of the cheapest plan offered. Employers are allowed to implement classification limitations. I can go into that if that's um, a question asked for later. Employers with 50 plus full-time employees, those that work 30 plus hours per week are required to offer GMPs that cost no more than 9.6% of an employee's household income and cover at least 60% of medical costs. That's probably trivia right now, information. However, employers smaller than 50 employees don't need to follow those rules. All, now, however, another information, all GMPs are ACA compliant, meaning they cover pre-existing conditions and minimum essential coverage, including preventive care services. And here is a list of some group insurance carriers that we provide, that we can quote on for groups. Now, the association health plans. Association health plans allow small businesses, including self-employed workers, to band together by geography or industry to obtain health coverage as if they are a single large employer. AHPs, this actually, here's a, a food for thought for information. They were actually uh, made possible by a new ERISA rule issued on the Department of Labor in 2018. They are high quality health plans with all the large employer protections, like all pre-existing conditions are covered. So, so one cannot be charged higher premiums, okay? Or denied if one becomes ill. 
No health discrimination, meaning AHPs cannot cherry pick or discriminate based on health factors. And there's a cap on, of, on out of pocket costs. But we'll, we'll go into the definition of those a little bit later. And higher MLR, what does that mean? 85% as you can see, which means medical loss ratio. It implies that HP insurance carriers must pay more on medical claims for participants. Currently, this is um, the carrier that FSOMA HP has right now, Cigna. Halfway through, I know. Hopefully we haven't lost anybody or put everybody to sleep yet. <laughs> so if you haven't yet, here's some terminology. So you can, some jargon. <laughs> I'm assuming a lot of you know these words by now. Premiums, co-pays, co-insurance, deductible. Max out of pocket. A lot of people think that the most important number is the deductible. I consider the max out of pocket to be the max, the most important number. Why? Because that is the tipping point. That's the ultimate number in that year that you have to pay until the entire insurance company pays for the rest for you. Deductible is just a middle threshold in between. You've seen probably deductibles are zero, and let, let's say the max out of pocket is 8,000 and the deductible could be zero, 4,000, or even 8,000. Meaning if it's at zero, you're, you're, your main goal is reaching that max out of pocket. That's how that plan is structured. If the plan's deduct, the deductible is at you know, 4,000, you see coinsurance, that's what it means right after. After you hit that deductible, now you're hitting coinsurance, a percentage. Now they, they are putting, um, they're putting some money to help you out. They're slowing that process to pay to get to that max out of pocket, okay? That's why they have that gap. But if the deductible is all the way to the top, you're not gonna have co-insurance. They're gonna pay 100% after you reach it. Other keywords, terminology that we need to know sometimes that some people are not you know, very familiar with. In network, um, out of network, obviously, if you're in, you're gonna save money. If you're out, you're gonna pay a lot. Minimum essential coverage typically came out when the Affordable Care Act came out. Um, basically, it's an MEC, um, health insurance coverage with essential health benefits that satisfy the ACA. That's typically what it is. And see, these are the plans that typically have that type of style, MEC. Preventive care, as you can see there, age banded and composite rates. These are typically seen in a group or as an individual. If you're an individual, typically when you get a plan, you're gonna see age banded. It's gonna be age banded premiums. If you see a group of you know maybe five or more, the composite rates are is a potential um, option that you can grab that everybody, it doesn't matter what health, what age you are, that rate is gonna be for everybody. That's just um, to let you know. Okay, so now we're into the gap fillers and health insurance gap fillers. So what, what is considered a health insurance gap? Any medical service your health insurance plan does not pay for is a gap. For example, copay, coinsurance, deductible, max out of pockets. Okay, gaps also include uncovered medical expenses or out of network medical expenses. So what are gap fillers? Indemnity insurance or AKA supplemental or work sites plans. They fill health insurance gaps. They pay non-taxable cash to you if you, are, you or a covered family member suffers a covered accident, illness or disease that is that is provided a charged service within the limits of the policy. They pay out of cash. They pay out cash, no matter what insurance you have, no matter what provider or facility you see. And typically the rates are fixed forever as long as you pay the premium. So here are examples of gap fillers. Accident insurance, hospital insurance, cancer, insurance, critical illness insurance. This is pretty much self-explanatory. 
disability insurance, okay, which is which includes short term and long term. And there, and of course, there are many variations of these kind of plans. Some can be bundled into one policy. Some have fixed benefit amounts per service. Some pay lump sums. Some have built-in annual wellness benefits. And here are some of the indemnity insurance carriers that AVZ Benefit Solutions represents, and many more. So now, in the next two slides, we give you a general decision-making guide on which type and path of health insurance you might need based on your needs and budget without considering preferred or needed doctors, hospitals, or medications, okay? Keep in mind, ABZ Benefit Solutions agents do go any step further by considering plan networks and your preferred or needed doctors, hospitals, and medications to fully evaluate options for your decision-making needs. In these two scenarios, the controlling parameters is a self-employed or sole, sole proprietor living in Palm Beach, Florida, making an annual household income of $75,000. So OMP stands for original monthly premium. SMP stands for subsidized monthly premium. DED stands for deductible. MOOP stands for max out of pocket. So Scenario one, this individual is in his or her 20s, single and healthy. So we research different pathways, gather premiums and gaps. And based on annual cost and risk, we would recommend the SDM path. Notice that A, there was no S&P for the a, ACA plan. And B, the inverse correlation between premium and max out of pockets. In scenario two, is a family of four with parents in their 40s, fairly healthy. Again, the thorough research and information gathering. This time the ACA plan has a subsidy. So the monthly premium is only $170. Plus it's free to see PCPs and $20 for specialists. Okay, as mentioned earlier, government subsidies are correlated to one's age, household income, and occupants. Now, keep in mind, though, the max out of pocket is 8,700 per person, and this family needs to stay in the HMO network so that they keep costs down. It still beats paying upfront for everything until this $10,000 on that PPO or the huge monthly premium on that OAP, right there. And these next, okay. These next two scenarios, the controlling parameters are two couples, okay? In their thirties, living in Palm Beach again, making an annual income of 375,000, okay? The key difference, one pair is in great health, the other is in poor health. And ABZ, we have seen all kinds of situations. So now three, this couple can choose any path. However, the ACA plan didn't trigger any subsidies. The STM is probably a preferred rate. And the, the AHP is what it, it is what it is, that the price. So based on the annual cost and risk assessment, we propose the STM since we don't foresee them going to many doctors in the year. Now in scenario four, this couple, however, has only two choices since their health is, you know, is a determining factor. Private STMs do have underwriting questions that sometimes deny people due to their pre-existing, as you can see in this case. The ACA and AHP don't have that problem. We left our choice blank to leave up to the couple because the cost risk differential is minimal. And it really comes down to in-network doctors. Do we have a preference? Yes, the AHP, for they have a larger network 
no referrals, and low max out of pocket, which can be more accommodating in their predicament. Now, please understand that everyone has the right and choice to go with whatever plan they can afford, unless ineligible. We simply educate them on their options and do the legwork on impartially finding them affordable and reliable plans to mitigate their costs and risk, while also taking into account their provider preferences and medication needs. Also, we do suggest in looking into GAP or indemnity insurance when your max out of pocket is $5,000 or above, especially if per person. They minimize your financial risk dramatically for only a few extra dollars a month. Okay. Oh, well. Okay. Now, on to, I'm looking at the time, sorry. <laughs> um, now going on to group um, benefits, programs and tools that AVZ offers to companies and employees. We can handle three or 1,000 employees locally or nationwide by searching, servicing, and advocating for your benefits. We quote all the local group insurance companies to find our clients value. For example, all group medical insurance types, including level funded plans, group dental, vision, disability, that includes short-term and long-term, hospital, accident, cancer, life, HSA, HRA, FSA, 401k. Our team and partners will always leverage cost saving strategies for companies and employees. However, if all established, our program list below may still be available for you and your employees. Like, you know, annual benefit or service performance reviews to determine accommodatable changes for improvements if necessary. We never know. Maybe this year was good. Maybe next year is bad. We need to accommodate. Let's do a review. Human resource information system, also known as HRIS software, to aid your HR department with onboarding, training, PTO, enrollments, company communications, etc. Personal health manager, PHM. It's a program where employees and the company get enhanced benefits and major monthly tax savings. Including more, benefit, including more benefits that I even mentioned above. Also, Employee Assistance Program, EAP, where employees and their families receive expert support services with life issues from stress, depression, addiction, etc. All programs and tools can potentially be for free. However, those with asterisks do have eligibility requirements for companies. Contact me to learn more. So what about Medicare? AVZ has helped hundreds with Medicare by providing learning sessions for individuals and groups throughout the years on original Medicare, differences between Advantage, Medigap, and dual plans, and building loyalty by staying impartial, listening, and responding to the needs of our clients. If you want to learn more about Medicare, our doors are always open. And here are some Medicare insurance carriers that ABC Benefit Solutions represents. So before I end this presentation, I wanna thank all of you for making this happen, especially Ellen Teeter, appreciate it, thank you. Without you, we could not have brought this to your FSOMA members. I also want to leave you with this short video, it's very brief, that ABC Benefit Solutions is your benefits advocate, wherever you are, whatever you do. Thank you. Questions? Anybody? It's open floor. <clears throat> Ah, let me check the, the chat. Greetings. We'll be taking questions at the end. Can you go back to the slides with all the different health insurance companies? Sure. And probably you had several of them. So are you talking about the 
Yeah, which one were you talking about, um, Bray? Yes, HSA plans, we do. Depends on the, obviously the, the, the quoting on the plan for the group, but yes, we do offer HSA plans. And let me see. So that was Medicare right there. Um, I think probably it was back on um, some of the other plans you offer. Yes. Let me go back to... The gap plans were there. Okay, um, so marketplace, oh, that might, yeah, health okay. insurance plans, those are the carriers. Um, let me see. And then we've got group medical plans. Is that helping you out? Oh, the one for businesses. Perfect. Right here we go. That's These will be uh, available when we post the recording. We'll have the a handout of the PowerPoint. So that just to reassure you on that. Yes. So we can offer these and you can actually include um, these as well as for group. Because these not only can be offered individually, but also group wise. Absolutely. You're welcome, Jacobs. Now, at this point, the um, association plan is probably a little more pricey than going through the marketplace. Um, yeah. Is that, yeah. And part yeah. of that is because with big companies and with trade unions, uh, sometimes their dues go towards that benefit. Um, yeah. So SOMA would have to raise our rates a little bit uh, to offset that. And I don't know if, I don't know, you know, how that would work. Yeah, I know. But um, <clears throat> you'd have to calculate into your uh, cost of being a SOMA member, then also the group, the uh, association plan. Um, it is yeah. a robust plan. You get a lot of benefit from it. There's a lot of good things in it. Um, well, yes, absolutely. Um, it's, a, it's a definite OAP plan. I mean, I, obviously I have all the, the jargon acronyms. <laughs> I hope yes. I don't lose anybody <laughs> with that. But um, yeah, the AHP that we so call this Association Health Plan um, definitely is national. You can go anywhere. And the great one of the great things about it, and I showed it in actually the example which is literally the actual AHP that Sona has. You can see here for a, pri for a primary doctor it's $20, specialist is 40, and the max out of pocket for an individual is 2000. And if you see in the bottom, if you had a family, the max out of pocket is 13,000. But if you had a couple, my recommendation is do it separately as an, you know, one has one plan and one has the other because it minimizes that matter, you know, that max out of pocket, that risk on each person. Instead of having the 13,000, you have 2,000 on each. It's only $100 extra a month. So that's what the 900 by two here means is yes. they each have their own plan. Okay. That's correct. So it actually is quite a bit more expensive. It's eighteen hundred a month instead of six sixty one or four oh two. Oh yes, uh, it's much more there. expensive. It's just now you have to do the cost uh, risk factor. If where do you see? So essentially, the if they go the ACA route, if they were to go the ACA route, they're paying six sixty one. Their max out of pocket is eight thousand seven hundred each. So right. they want to cover that. They probably want to have an, a gap plan or indemnity plan to you know offset that risk of eight thousand seven hundred. If anything were to have or happen to them, you know, knock on wood. The same thing goes with the PPO. However, the PPO is probably a better choice if you go between the, this EPO and the PPO. These two, right here, because 
the being the fact that it's 402 and you have a, a you know a whole lot less max out of pocket it's much more affordable mm -hmm. therefore you don't have to get you know that becomes affordable and the indemnity plan is then more affordable because they only have to cover that five thousand and uh probably you pay more with the premium than you get with the reduction in the max out of pocket between the uh, PPO and the OAP or the association plan and the other one. Right. So and I'm looking at I'm looking at the questions. Would you recommend one spouse on their own and the other with the kid? Very likely. Yes, Lydia. I may actually recommend that. We have to obviously look at it. We have to look at the situation. Everyone's everyone's situation is always different. That's why I, I put out the, the scenarios. But we always definitely look at that and that most likely commonly ends up happening that we separate because it becomes more cost effective. Does it matter in terms of cost, what county you're living or your yes. the area of the state? Yeah, yes. so. Yes, it does. Yeah. That's why I put the zip code there because I can change that zip code and the price will be $50 difference or $100 difference. So Sandra, that, that will also answer your question because everyone's uh, situation is different. Depending on where you live, what county, you know, can it, I can probably get you something, you know, depending on your income. It all depends on the parameters, you know, the income you make a year, how many people it is in your household, it can end, be, end up being, let's say, $50. There's some plans that end up being $50 or $170, like the other example. Let me show you for a second. The, um, it's like this, this family of four, the original medical plan, a premium was actually 1,300, but being the fact that they're only making 75,000 and they have four people, the government and subsidy brings it down to 170. I hope that helps Sandra, answering your question. Plus right. the, uh, the, the example up above is for a single coverage in their yeah. 20s, but yeah. that, that could be the range depending yes. on the type of plan you pick exactly yeah exactly but everyone obviously they can call me and we can find out more details for this specific uh, need absolutely uh there is a question doesn't the aca route consider the income of the insured and you just pretty much said that and they also you know how many people are being insured the income total income of the group and the you know, family let's say um goes into the ACA calculation. Yes. Is that, yeah. Yeah, the health, the whole entire, yeah, ACA does go to the household, whether the, the ch children. Typically, if the child works, we try to separate them because they take care of their taxes. So that way it becomes more um, flexible. It becomes a more flexible situation that the, the child now has, um, the, the teenager, is working on their own, making an income, they do their taxes, and sometimes they can benefit from getting a plan that may be $5, $10, who knows, obviously. But we, we try to find that out. So that way, uh, when you put it in a, in a group's basis, the entire family, it's not that beneficial if you kind of separate them. That also helps the question with Lydia as well. Younger age, better health lowers your premiums for sure. Yes. But of course, with the ACA and AHP, you have no worries with pre existing or illnesses. So, but obviously, the HP does help out with subsidies. The HP, the AHP does not. The, and then, of course, you have the, the ACA only having availability of HMOs and EPOs. But then you have the AHP, which is expensive, but you have an OAP, which is the best network that you can think of across the nation. That's what you go for. Yes. You see the. Okay. Yeah, I saw the question. Yes, okay. that is very true, Sandra. That does happen a lot. Yep. I, uh, yep. That happens. It 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 depends on the situation. It you, you know that's why we always ask you know 
how healthy and you know what is your income because it ends up being what do you need because you know you have the ACA options the STM options and if preventive care is a, a, a necessity and you're going to see yourself going to a lot of doctors it might be more beneficial to go an ACA than an STM even though sometimes SCMs can be more affordable than ACAs if your household and the household occupants and income is not beneficial, put it that way, <laughs> okay. to the situation to bring down the premiums. So the, really, oh. the, the best thing for individuals is to uh, go through with you the, get it, the, get the, you the information about their situation and then you can give them these options of what it would take to get in this plan or that plan and correct what it would mean in terms of out-of-pocket deductible pre monthly premium etc yes and you know i consider myself a little nerd with the math <laughs> so i yeah. basically do uh I, I like doing those analysis to give you a scenario basically best case scenario worst case scenario always consider that the max out of pocket because that's the worst case you know you gotta get hit if you get hit by a bus or you get hit by covid that's going to hit you a lot you know you're going to be out of work you're going to you're going to be recuperating yeah hopefully you're you know you're survived but then you're going to be dealing with costs and that's where you know that's why the nuts and bolts of these plans actually are there for and now obviously you just gotta find out what cost risk ratio you want to take to consideration this year or the next as you you know as we all age so yeah help sandra if, if you need any help and if you want any comparisons absolutely be happy to help you with that situation okay any more questions yeah uh, like I said, we'll be posting the the video, the and uh, a PDF of the PowerPoint um, when we. It'll be on the Building Better Business page on the website. So um, we're getting some thank yous. So yes. all right, and thank you very welcome. much. Thank you, uh, and thank you, Alejandro. This was great. I, it was a lot of information. Yeah, I have a little more understanding of the insurance industry, which always helps with better decision making. And um, all right, thank Absolutely. you all for attending and we will talk to you all later. Absolutely. Remember to Thanks. call the office if you need any support or need help contacting uh, Alejandro. We're Absolutely. here to support you. All right. Anytime, everybody, thank you very much for attending and um, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ellen, again for everything. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Bye-bye.